Hi guys, so today we're going to be looking at the glazed soft gel tip kit by Seeds Tutorials. I love seeing creators come out with their own kits, so I'm super excited to try this. If you watch nail content on TikTok, you've probably seen her videos. In fact, I've used a couple of her videos as examples on what we're going to be trying in like testing TikTok nail hacks or designs videos. I love her TikToks. So she did come out with her own brand and it's called Glazed and her first product is a full cover tip soft gel system. So by default, it does come with long stiletto because you can make a long stiletto into a coffin, an oval, or even a square if you chop it down enough. So she said that's why she included this one length and shape right now. This is like the default and the only option. Then it also comes with a dehydrator, a primer, a gel glue, and a top coat. Then for our design, I have not one, but two new Nails by Dev collections. So we will swatch all of these and use them in our design today. But first, let's put on the nails and look at this kit. So we'll open it on up. So let's get the dehydrator out and I'll just grab everything else out too. So I paid $30 for this kit plus like six or $7 shipping. And I really hope she's making some money on this cause this stuff is nice quality. Like the bottles are glass or ceramic or whatever they're made of. And we have 12 sizes here. That is a very affordable price for a whole nail kit, especially doing it independently. It's easier for big brands to cut down their costs with bulk discounts and stuff like that. But when you're doing it like independently, even if it's like a hundred or thousand units, it's still gonna cost more than you know like five ten thousand units so i hope she's making something on this but anyway so i was looking at these tips and i noticed that it only went up to 10 but it said 12 sizes of course zero counts as one and so i looked through and it looks like we have both size 10 and 11 in this little slot here so my nails are bare and ready right now well let's get started so I'm gonna do just very light prep on my nails today. My cuticles are already done. I did some painting this weekend and it got all up in my nails. So if there's any little black flecks in there, it's paint. I did my hardest to get it out from all the crevices, but when I did that, I like tore up my cuticles a little bit. So I had to trim them and do all of that stuff before this video. So I'm just going to lightly buff my nails with a 180 buffer. I'm gonna wipe with alcohol. And before we go any further, we should probably grab out our sizes. So like I said, they are a long stiletto. I personally would have hoped for like an extra long stiletto just for, you know, a little bit more options because these are definitely a little short for me. So next we need to customize these to our nails. I pretty much need to do this to almost every tip I use because my cuticles are more rounded and tips always come with more of like a squarer cuticle. While I'm filing the edges of these, I'm also gonna buff out around the cuticle just to make it a little bit thinner and blend a little bit better. Honestly, I'm pretty lazy about this most of the time, but I want these to come out good today. And then I'm going to go in and etch the inside with my drill. It is okay if you do not have a drill, you can use a buffer. Just get like a coarse one, like an 80 or 100 and just swipe it on the inside. But because I have a drill, I'm gonna use it. Then I'm gonna just brush all the dust off of these. I don't really recommend wiping them with alcohol or acetone. Sometimes if you do that, it can almost like melt the gel a little bit and it can discolor it to like white. Also, if you wipe it with acetone, sometimes you can like re-smooth out the etching so then it will pop off because you've essentially like leveled out all the etching on the inside, if that makes any sense. I think best results is just, you know, like brushing off all of the dust. Although on the contrary, you can chemically etch it and you can do that with acetone, get a brush, like a stiff brush, dip it in acetone and then rub it roughly on the back of the tip so that it's leaving a texture. Now, something that this kit had that a lot of kits don't usually include is a dehydrator. A lot of kits include primers, but not dehydrators. So I do like that this came with one. So I'm gonna just do a dehydrator now all over my nails. And then now the primer. I like the brushes that are in these bottles. It's very like tightly held together, a little bit longer than normal and a little stiffer, which I think is good for stuff like this. Wouldn't be great necessarily for like a color gel, but for primer and dehydrator and stuff like that, I think that is good. I pulled out the tip glue to see if the brush was the same and it is not, I love that. So here's the difference in brush for the dehydrator and primer and the tip glue. So I'm glad she changed it on that. That's really good attention to detail. I love that. One of these little nail lamps is included. Here's what that looks like. Little nail lamps like this are great for adhering your tip, but you do want to still have a 
full-sized lamp to fully cure everything and also you know for like your colored gel and stuff. I do think having one of those little lamps is beneficial because it's really hard to make sure that you're putting your nail on straight and also put it in a full-sized lamp. Personally, I don't really use those kinds. I like to have a little bit more space. I have this one. This one's from Enail and it has like a bunch of little ones and it is also chargeable. <laughs> it's also motion censored. That of course is not necessary, but it's very useful for me when I only have so many plugs here and I need most of these plugs for lights, batteries, mics, you know. So I will be using this lamp, but the lamp that comes with it is totally good to do this too. So let's get these on. So I am grabbing my tip glue out now and the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to put a thin layer of the gel glue on my actual nail and I'm going to try to do this thin. This is a thicker formula, which is good, but I'm going to do a very thin layer on my natural nail and not cure it. And then I'm going to put the gel on the tip as well. You wanna make sure that you don't just put gel like on the tip here and call it good. You wanna put it anywhere that your natural nail is going to be touching. That way it's easier for the gel to flow up to the top and fill in all that gap. And then I'm gonna put this excess on the edge and I like to push mine up a little bit because usually I need filling in towards the top of my nail. And no matter what I do, I always end up like flooding my cuticle if I leave it all towards the end, no matter how I push it, just cause I feel like I need most of it at the top. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna grab my lamp right there, but then we'll adhere it. And then I'm gonna put this on at an angle and then push forward like so. Then I'm gonna bring it over here to cure. And there we have it, super easy. So once again, just a thin layer on my natural nail. Make sure to really get up to the edge on your nail for this, if you're doing it this method, because that will really ensure that the gel goes all the way to the edge of the tip. For me, one of my biggest challenges even still is getting little air bubbles on the edge of the nail, not in the center or anything, but just like on the corners and stuff. So I always try to make sure I get as close as possible without getting it on my skin. Then we'll get our gel on the tip. And let's put this on. And I'm just going to repeat that process every single time. Now that the tips are on, I'm gonna go in and do a full 60 second cure in my full lamp. Now our tips are on. I feel like they look pretty good. I did like that gel glue for it being like a more liquidy one nowadays. I definitely prefer a more solid gel, but that one was pretty thick. So I felt like that was good. Thicker thin gel glue is really just like a really personal preference. And I'm actually going to change the shape a little bit today, not a ton, but I'm going to make them into more of like a almond oval type shape instead of a stiletto. So we're not gonna take much length off, but we're gonna take the little tip off. So to do that, I'm going to just cut off the little number on each nail. That way it's just that much less filing I need to do. You can of course always do your shape before you even put the nails on. I just prefer to do it while the tips are already on my nails. It's easier for me like that. We're looking at like a coffin shape right now so I'm going to just round out everything now. Now that we have the nails all on, it's time to decorate them. So let's take a look at these two new collections from Nails by Dev. Before I forget, you can use code Emily Susanna for 10% off all Nails by Dev. Okay, let's dive into the Enchanted Dreams collection and do some swatches on these. These are really fun. I did honestly take a peek at both because I was really excited. So we have eight gels in this collection and these gels are more of toppers, as you can see, they are all pretty light. They mostly have like a shifty effect in them. You'll see once we swatch them. You of course can use them by themselves, but they're gonna like really pop over a color. So these gels are very shifty, which means they're going to look different over a lighter color and a darker color. So I figured I would show you over both. So first off, we'll start with wishful thinking. Very pretty. 
I think we're gonna have a green and pink shift on this one. Also doing the swatches this way will ensure that you guys can see the shifting colors in them in case the camera isn't like picking it up good like in the bottle. This one is Aurora looking a little bit more orangey to me. After we finish swatching, I will also show you guys all of these in the sun because I feel like they will look way better in the sun than in here with all these lights. Next up is Amethyst Dreams. I feel like some of these can look a little bit similar in the bottle, but once you put them on the swatch, you can see the different colors in them. This one is Euphoria. Ooh, this one's pretty. I feel like the pigment in this one is just a little bit bigger, so it looks just like a tad bit more... I don't want to say glittery because it's not glittery, but you can see the pigment pieces a little bit more, but I like how it looks. This one is Golden Hour, and this one looks like a bluish to orangish shift. This one is Castle in the Sky, and this is looking like a blue to yellow golden shift. Here we have Lucid Lullaby, and I can already tell I'm going to love this one. And last but not least, this is Emerald Mist. Ooh, this one's really pretty too. Ooh, you know what? This one might end up being my favorite. Okay, here are all the swatches. Hopefully you can see a bigger difference between the colors now, especially on the black. Okay, I'm gonna pull out my flashlight and try to show you guys the like shift a little bit better. Let's see. Oh wow, yay, so pretty. It does kind of show it a little bit better. You can also see the difference between the more similar colors way better this way because none of these colors are actually super similar, even though in the bottle they all look very similar. So now moving on to the next new collection. This is the Spring Fling Collection. I love the packaging on this one. It's so cute. And again, I took a peek at these and these are jellies, which I'm super excited about. So for these swatches, I'm gonna do a similar thing, but I'll show you over clear and white just so you can get a really good idea of the color. So starting off with Hot Chick. You guys know I love jellies. Jellies I think are my favorite kind of gels. We've got two different types of pink in here. So this is the hot pink. Then we have this one. This one is cherry blossom. And this one is like a really unique pink. I almost wanted to say like it's dusty. It's not, I have no idea how to describe it. It's hard to see what I'm talking about with just the swatch. But if you look at like the cap color where it's like really compact with that gel, it's just like so interesting. Next up is She's a Peach, and of course this is our orange shade. I did arrange to do these swatches in a rainbow. <laughs> I think I might go back and do a second coat on these just so we can see them like really popping. I love the names in the set. This one is Honey Bee, and this one is Lemon Drop, although I'm gonna be honest, this one looked greener to me than yellow. I thought it was a neon green, not a neon yellow. I guess let's see how it looks over the swatch. Okay, yes, even on the swatch, it's still giving green to me. Do you guys see more yellow or green in this one? And this one is Spring Love. In comparison to the last one, this one's definitely more of a muted green. Up next is Rainy Days. This one's really pretty. And lastly, we have Lavender Honey. I will show you these all together, but I'm gonna do a second coat on them first. And here are the swatches. I feel like they all look super pretty and very spring. I'm really excited for the spring designs. Oops. <laughs> Hold on. That's better. <laughs> and remember, this is two coats, so you can like build it up or it can be like really sheer. I'm gonna definitely use these jellies as a base today. And I'm really excited to get into the nail art because I've firmly decided on what I wanna do and I'm hoping it's gonna turn out really pretty. So let's get into that. So since I'm gonna do my base jelly, I'm actually going to start out by putting a top coat underneath my nails just so we can ensure that everything stays nice and clean and clear. It's always super easy to discolor tips with acetone or alcohol. And if I end up needing to wipe my nails a lot with alcohol today, like if I messed up a design or something like that, then I wanna be able to do that and not worry about the back looking wonky. I probably should have done this like right after so they didn't get dirty or anything between the time I put them on yesterday and then now, but oh well, it is what it is. And now I'm gonna put a base coat on my nails. I know I feel like this is all prep, no design so far. And this is gonna give us a nice, very clear even base to work off of. Again, a lot of the time I'm lazy about doing this kind of stuff, but I really want these nails to come out good because I think I'm going to spend a lot of time on the nail art today. So I want to make sure I don't hinder anything by not having a good base down. These look so nice and clear and are super ready for our colors. So finally, let's get to putting some color on these. I was thinking about an ombre, but I just want to use all of them. I was really back and forth between doing each nail one full color or an ombre, but I settled <laughs> on doing kind 
kind of like a blobby gradient on each nail. Some of the nails doing a warmer tone and some doing a cooler. I think that'll look really good. Kind of like an aura vibe. So let's start on the thumb. Okay, so I'm gonna just start doing kind of just like a, about a third of it with one color, grabbing another color, doing about another third of it. And then lastly, doing my final third color over here. Then I'm taking my ombre brush and I'm gonna kind of just feather everything together. It should honestly blend together pretty easily. And then since I'm not doing just like one, you know, nice brush stroke, I'm going to just let this sit upside down for a sec to kind of level everything out. And then let's try this with our cooler colors. I think I need to change which brush I'm using a little bit. This one has some finer spikes. Since we're not really wanting to like really, really blend, I just kind of want them to melt into each other a little bit. Then I'm gonna just repeat this for our first coat for the rest of the nails. These look so cute. Like even just like this, the color is subtle. I am really tempted to leave it like this, but I do want the color to pop a little bit more. I want these to be really colorful, like really springy, like in your face. So I'm gonna put a second coat, but this is so cute like it is. It's giving very much like aura vibes. So pretty. Okay, we'll do our second coat. I will do my other hand. I am doing my other hand the same as this hand, but I'm not really filming this hand just because you're already seeing this hand. You call me a saint, but you know I'm a stranger. A willing and able to do what you want. You think I'm a thinker, but I'm just a singer. All busy and pretty, just making believe. But I'm falling, I'm falling. So here's two coats of our little gradient. Now I really want to use those like topper gels. So I'm not gonna get too crazy with it. This is the last thing I'll do for the base. I almost wanna do like a like circle ombre kind of with it, like just a little bit in the center and it just spread out a little bit using these shifty ones. So for the cool tones, I have the Emerald Mist and for the warm toned ones, I have Aurora. And while I do this, I'm also going to top coat them because the stuff I'm gonna use for my design does not need to be top coated and I probably won't top coat it. So we need to top coat it now. Of course, for this, I'm gonna be using our glaze top coat that came with our kit. Let's see. All right, I like the thick brush. Definitely not like sticky. Okay, we'll put this on. This top coat is definitely on the thinner side. Then I'm gonna grab my little circle of the shifty gel. And I'm gonna kind of just like circle it on out. Then I will also blend it out a little bit if need be. I want this to just be like a little sparkle behind the design. I don't want it overpowering or anything like that or over the full design. Think about it like sun, like shining through something like some flowers, the forest, through the trees, that kind of vibe. I'm trying to do this very carefully and the top coat has been leveling back out after I've been mixing this in, which is really nice. The shifting gels do have a bit of memory to them, so do keep that in mind if you're wanting to like ombre them or anything like that. And what that means is if you put like a line in it, I'll just demonstrate one sec. If I draw lines in it, it will smooth out, but you'll still see those lines. So we will probably still see some of those lines in my little blended out gradient. It's not gonna like blend 100%, that's okay. I do like that the top coat is very self-leveling even after I've been messing with it. Then on to our cooler toned nails using the more green one. Then we'll give everything a nice long cure and we can do the design on top now, finally. 
And here they are with our little bit of shimmer and a top coat. The shimmer is very subtle in there, but I feel like it really does make it pop in the right light. So for my design today, I have grabbed out my gels that act like oil paints, and I'm going to do a bunch of different flowers. I really wanted to do a bunch of flowers today because I've been looking at a lot of flowers recently. Long story short, my house has been like falling apart on the outside and the inside a little bit. So we've had to get a lot of stuff replaced. So I've been really also working on doing some like landscaping or gardening out front to make it all look pretty with all the new stuff that we're having to get. And so I've been looking at a lot of different flowers to put in that I think would look nice. And I never knew there were so many different types of flowers, just like looking at all the different seeds that I could get for them. I was just amazed at like how many different types I had never really, I guess, seen before or really, I guess, acknowledged before and like looking for more like rare flower seeds. So I got really inspired to do that. And I decided to go with the oil paint gel for this because a lot of these flowers are more like intricate looking and I don't think that I can draw them in regular gel very well. I don't think I'd be very good at doing the details and everything so tiny and let's be real. I'm not really good at drawing a regular plain flower in gel. I don't think I've ever done any that are like super spectacular. So I feel like the oil paint gel is a lot more forgiving in the style. I think the difference between the base and the flower design is going to be so different that it's going to work together. The base of the nails are like, you know, jelly, sparkly, dreamy, shiny, and the oil paints are more like muted, matte, opaque, you know what I mean? It's just gonna be such a contrast. I think it's gonna look really good. I'm gonna need a lot of different colors, so I'm just gonna grab out everything I think I'm gonna need right off the bat. I would like to not try to have to keep coming back and forth to it. So let's just get all of these on a palette. I'm gonna get very small amounts for now because I don't wanna waste any of this. This was a limited edition product, so there is not more to buy once I run out. Definitely going to need quite a few greens. Oh no, that one's separated. You know, I really wouldn't know how to like mix this back very well because it's in this type of tube and you can't really like squish it around that much. And you also, I don't think shaking it is gonna do anything because it's too thick. I guess I'll just massage it for a minute. <laughs> okay, that's a little better. So the first flower I'm going to do is the Love Lies Bleeding flower. And this is actually something that I grew last year and they were super cool. It's like these bunches of like little string flowers almost. And they really do just kind of like flop and lie over. They're very heavy and they get really big, but they are super cool looking. So that's gonna be my first attempt. And I'm just going to like roughly put the stem down that way I have somewhere to follow. And then I'm just gonna start going off and doing some flowers, I guess. When you work with the oil paints, it's really a curing game because it doesn't matter how many times I go over this one spot right here with the oil paint. I keep saying oil paint, you guys know this is gel, right? But no matter how many times I go over this one spot, it's not really gonna look that different until I cure it and do a second layer, just because that's the nature of the product. So you kind of have to do like a really thin base layer and build it up from there. And they get smaller as they go down. Not too bad so far. And really, I'm gonna just be repeating this process over and over and over for now. Although these flowers are super cool, I don't think I'm going to plant them again this year. This year I'm wanting to do pretty much like all pink in my front yard at least. I've never had a cut flower garden and so I think I might kind of like do that with it. I don't know. I only started doing like any sort of garden each year in the past two years. What really started it was I found these seeds at a crystal shop and I thought they were super cool. And it was for a lot of stuff I had never heard before, like these love lives, bleeding flowers, black jalapenos, black tomatoes and stuff like that. So I got a couple of those packs and decided I was gonna try to do that. So I planted my black jalapenos and that year I didn't plant any flowers, I don't think. Then I also decided to get a couple pepper plants from the store and decided I was gonna do a pepper garden since I wanted to plant my black jalapenos. And um, I didn't really have a good first year. I think I got some peppers off of my, there's like Thai chili plant, but other than that, I didn't really get anything. I don't think I got anything off of anything I grew from a seed. I think I managed to grow one ghost pepper from a plant that I had already purchased from the store. And that's pretty much it, aside from like my Thai 
red pepper plant. And then last year I planted a lot of tomatoes and I had a really good year with my tomatoes. I was shocked at how many I got, honestly. Like, completely dumbfounded that I was able to grow that many things from seed or scratch. I don't know why I want to say scratch. And then these actually have a ton of leaves, like leading up to the flowers. And then I also planted these flowers and then I planted some cosmos and I also planted, I think, red velvet pansies. I'm actually so happy with this. I feel like the texture really works. I'm really happy with my choice to do the oil paint texture with this. So I'm gonna put another one right here and then we will move on to the next flower. So next up, I think I'm gonna do a dahlia. And honestly, this looks very difficult, especially so small. I'm gonna have like two here. So I'm just going to mark out the centers of where I'm gonna put the two just to start. All right, let's begin. This one's gonna be orange and yellow, and I'm trying to use just the shape of the brush to make the shape of the petals. And dahlias are very layered, so I'm gonna really just try to do that with this paint and try to show it that way. These are complicated looking flowers. I might plant some of these this year. Honestly, I'm not even sure if I can plant half of the ones I want to plant this year because I'm gonna be honest, I garden based on vibes which means that I don't really check the instructions as much as I probably should or like when you're supposed to plant things or prune them. I just kind of like plant it and uh, hope for the best. Google a couple things here and there. I'm trying to be better about it. And when I'm actually like ordering seeds on websites opposed to just grabbing a couple in person, it gives you like so much info. So then I know if things will bloom like this year or next year or if you need to plant them in like fall or spring or whatever. Okay, the Dahlia was very difficult. It really takes some time to learn how to use this type of material, but I think now I'm getting the hang of it and it definitely needs more patience than I have, so I'm trying to slow down a little bit. So I'm gonna hopefully move on and do better on this next one. I think I'm gonna do some hyacinths on this one and obviously I have abandoned the face cam for now because I'm holding my head so close to my nail you can't even see me in it anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna just roughly put where I'm gonna put them. Maybe I'll just start with the two, that way I don't get out of control with it. I think a dotting tool will work best for this, but a smaller one. There we go, that's better. And I'm gonna do a variety of purples on this one. I think that'll be very pretty. All these flowers make me think of is Animal Crossing. If you've played the new Animal Crossing, I'd be surprised if these flowers didn't also make you think that. I'm switching to a brush because I feel like the texture is smoothing out with the dotting tool. And then a lighter one over here. And these have pretty thick stems and leaves. Okay, so I'm just finishing up these ones. I feel like the layout looks a little strange, but it's okay. Next up, I'm doing some Canterbury Bells. I wanted to plant these this year, but apparently they're ones that need to be planted like in the fall for the next year. And obviously I uh, am a bit late on that, but I think they're really pretty. And then I'm hoping that the opening of the flower is really easy to do with the texture. Just kind of do like a wavy line to give it that feel. Okay, these ones turned out super pretty and next I decided to do the saffron flower. Of course, we all know the little threads that grow on saffron are extremely expensive, but I had never actually seen the full plant before and it is so pretty.
And here's how the full nails turned out. I did not end up finishing these three nails, but I did get two flowers on this hand. You may be able to tell that these nails are already grown out. It has actually been over two weeks since I finished these nails. So I have a wear test update for you guys. The nails are still on really good. I've had no lifting whatsoever and they still feel very solid. I liked it so much that even I did my friend's nails this past weekend and I used the kit on her and she says they feel very solid as well. But overall, I feel like this is a great kit. They last super well and I feel like it's a really good beginner kit. Plus I love to support a fellow creator. I feel like she did an amazing job with this kit. Let me know what you guys think of these flowers. And also tell me what you are planting this year, whether it's like veggies, fruit, trees, flowers, whatever. Let me know. I'm curious. So thank you so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye!